sorry to say that this is not the movie you will be watching. The movie you are about to see is extremely unpleasant. If you wish to see a film about a happy little elf, I'm sure there is still plenty of seating in theatre number two. However, if you like stories about clever and reasonably attractive orphans, suspicious spies, carnivorous leeches, Italian food, and secret organizations, yes! stay. Okay! As I retrace each and every one of the Baudelaire children. What's your name? What's your name? My name is Lemony Snicket. Oh, hello, Lemony Snicket! <laughs> and it is my sad duty to document this. Ah. <laughs> Violet Baudelaire, the eldest, was one of the finest 14-year-old inventors in the world. Anyone who knew Violet well could tell she was inventing something when her long hair was tied up in a ribbon. In a world of abandoned items and discarded materials, Violet knew there was always something. Something she could fashion into nearly any device for nearly every occasion. And no one was better to test her invention than her brother. Klaus Baudelaire, the middle child, loved books. Or rather, the things he learned from books. The Baudelaire parents had an enormous library in their mansion, a room filled with thousands of books on nearly every subject. And nothing pleased Klaus more than spending an afternoon filling up his head with their contents. And everything he read, he remembered. They're my watch! The youngest had a different interest. She liked to bite things and had four sharp teeth. <laughs> very little that Sunny did not enjoy biting. Sunny was at an age when one mostly speaks in a series of unintelligible shrieks. For instance, which probably meant, look at that mysterious figure emerging from the fog. Or perhaps, what is a banker like Mr. Poe doing, trudging through the sand to find out at Briny Beach? Children, I'm afraid I must inform you of an extremely unfortunate event. I'm very, very sorry to tell you this, but your parents have perished in a fire that's destroyed your entire home. If you have ever lost someone very important to you, then you already know how it feels. And if you haven't, you cannot possibly imagine it. No one knows the precise cause of the Baudelaire fire. My colleagues and I have investigated the best we can, but all we've discovered is that the blaze was started from a great distance through the refraction and convergence of light. And within moments, the entire mansion was in flames. And as mysterious as the source of the What happened next, Mary Spigot? As mysterious as the source of the blaze, other mysteries began to unfold before the children's eyes. Every family has its secrets, doors left unopened. But as Klaus now realized, the smallest discovery would send his mind reeling with questions. What was this spider hidden in his father's desk? Were there other secrets about their parents' lives yet to be revealed? Questions he now feared might never be answered. And just like that, the Baudelaire children became the Baudelaire orphans. I tried to warn them. You see it? This is an excellent opportunity to walk out of the theater, living room, or airplane where the film is being shown. Not too late to see a film about a happy little elf. Yes, um, come with me. <clears throat> now, as 
chief officer of Montfiori Management and the executor of your parents' estate, it is my legal obligation to take care of your money till you come of age and to place you in the care of your closest relatives. So I'm taking you to live with your dear Count Olaf, who resides right here in the city, just 37 blocks away. I don't think...